In our last video, we talked you through how to mount your scope properly to the rifle so that it fits you. Well, now we're going to talk about some of the adjustments you can make on that scope so that you can zero your rifle, engage targets at different distances, and just understand how the whole system works a whole lot better. Well, most likely your scope adjusts like mine in minutes of angle. So we're going to have to start with understanding what minutes of angle are and how we can use them. Hi, I'm Ryan Kleckner with the National Shooting Sports Foundation. I was a sniper team leader in 1st Range Battalion and a sniper instructor. And today, we're going to talk about minutes of angle. Now, minute of angle. Minute is just a fancy word for 1 60th. Think about 60 minutes in an hour. Well, that's the same as saying one minute of time is a 60th of an hour. Well, this minute is going to be a 60th of this angle. And this angle is what we're talking about is on a circle, the 360 degrees. It's just one of those degrees. So a 60th of one of those degrees is one minute of angle. Well, we're in luck because that's actually quite easy for us to visualize. It ends up being about one inch at 100 yards. Now, I say about because it's not truly one inch. It's 1.047 inches. But for our purposes, one inch and rounding to that one inch is close enough. So here's the way to think about it. It's not a size at a certain distance, but rather it's an angle that we're making in the scope that ends up translating to a certain size at a distance. So picture it this way. These two markers, we're going to pretend are laser pointers. And if I take these and I spread them the right amount apart, let's say one minute of angle, the dots from these laser pointers are going to spread further apart as they go out in distance. Well, at 100 yards, those dots are going to be about one inch apart but they're going to keep continuing spreading, be two inches apart at 200, three inches apart at 300, and so on. But don't get confused. Those three inches at 300 yards are still just one minute of angle. So we make those adjustments on the scope. That's the angle we make, which changes at the distance. Now, there's a trick I use to figuring this out, because it can get confusing at different distances. Whatever distance I'm shooting, I think of what one minute of angle is going to be at that distance, and I try and remember that increment in my head. Let's take an example of 400 yards. So if we're trying to impact this spot at 400 yards, the first step I said is to start thinking about what one minute of angle is at this distance. Well, 400 yards, one minute of angle equals about four inches. So I'm going to start thinking in four inch increments. If my bullet impact impacts four inches low, I know I need to come up one minute of angle. If the bullet impacts eight inches low, I know that two of those four inch chunks fit there, so therefore I need to come up two minutes of angle. It's really that simple. And you can actually break it down into smaller segments too. So let's say at the same 400 yards, my bullet impacts six inches low. The way to figure it out is to think about those increments and realize that one and a half of those four inch increments fit into the six inch difference. So that means I need to come up one and a half minutes on my scope and I can impact that spot. It's really that simple. Well, the question next should be, so what? Why do we have these adjustments on our scope? Why does it matter? that the minutes of angle translate to different sizes at different distances. Well, the important part here is not just to learn how to zero your rifle. You don't need to know what adjustments it means. You just could keep turning it up until it hits where you want it to. Well, but by knowing what these minutes equal at different distances, we can compensate for different dis distances and therefore shoot where we want to no matter how far away the target is. So let's break it down first on what the bullet's doing when it leaves the barrel. There's plenty of factors that affect the bullet the second it leaves the barrel. But the biggest thing that affects the bullet is also the easiest to account for. It's gravity. Now most of us know that when the bullet leaves the barrel, it travels in an arc. But it's not a perfect arc. It actually starts off dropping just a little bit, and then it drops an awful lot as the bullet gets further away. That's because the bullet is traveling that first 100 yards in a much faster time then it's traveling that last 100 yards. The bullet's slowing down as it flies through the air. Well, a bullet that's slower is exposed to gravity longer and therefore falls faster. That's as simple as it is. In a fraction of a second, the bullet can only fall so far, where a full second, the bullet can fall a lot more. Well, knowing this, we can account for the drop of the bullet. 
Now drop is the key word there. Even though it travels in an arc, the bullet is dropping the entire way. I've met a few people that want to believe that because the bullet travels in an arc, they're convinced the bullet is rising when it leaves the barrel, but that's just not the case. The truth of the matter is your barrel is actually angled up and the bullet is dropping when it leaves. Here's the way you can picture it. Imagine yourself on a football field and someone's down, down the field and you want to throw the football to them. We all know that you need to throw the football up at an angle in order for it to make it all the way to that person. Well, let's just call that 45 degrees. Well, right as I throw that football, if gravity just turned off, that football would stay on that 45 degree line and fly away from the person. But because gravity is affecting the football all the way, it immediately starts falling away from that 45 degree line and falls to the person. Same thing happens with your barrel. Your barrel's pointed up at a certain angle, but as soon as the bullet leaves, it starts to drop, but it still travels in an arc all the way to the target. The good news is it's going to do it pretty consistently so we can account for it at different distances. Let's use my rifle for an example, the 308 that I showed you how to mount the scope on. Just my bullet flight path is going to look something like this. This is just a rough estimation, okay? This is the flight of the bullet, and this is going to be my line of sight looking straight out of the scope. I'm going to call this 100 yards because that's where I'm going to have my rifle zeroed so the bullet is rising and meeting my line of sight and impacting where I want it to at 100 yards. If this is 200 yards, we'll have 300, 400, and for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll just go out to 500 yards. Well, I don't have to make any changes at 100. It hits where I want to already. But as we get up to 200, you can see that the bullet starts to drop away from where I'm looking. That's okay. We can account for it. Now for my rifle, I know that the bullet drops four inches low at 200 yards. So how do we account for this? Step one, remember, is to think about what one minute of angle is at that distance. Well, one minute of angle at 200 yards equals about two inches. And then we then ask ourselves, how many of those chunks can fit into that difference? Well, two of them can. So I need to adjust up two minutes of angle to impact where I want at 200 yards. Well, let's move out a little bit further. At 300 yards, 400 yards, and 500 yards, it drops more and more. At 300 yards, I know my bullet drops 15 inches, just because of the experience of me shooting it before. At 400 yards, I know my bullet drops about 32 inches. And at 500 yards, I know my bullet drops a full 60 inches. So let's work our way through each of these and practice using the minutes of angle to figure out what we need to do. Step one, figure out what one minute equals at that distance. One minute at 300 is three inches. How many of those three inch chunks fit into the 15? Five minutes. I need to come up five minutes of angle. It's really that simple. If we do the same thing here, one minute is four inches. Eight of those four inch chunks fit into the 32. So I need to come up eight minutes of angle. And now even all the way out at 500 yards. One minute is how many inches at 500 yards? Five. How many five inch chunks fit into that 60? 12. So I know I need to come up 12 minutes of angle in order to hit where I want to at 500 yards. If you notice, these numbers get quite a bit bigger each time. From 100 being zero minutes, we come up two, then three, then three, then four. It'll get bigger to five, then seven, and every 100 yards, you'll have to come up more and more to account for that drop. Well, as long as the factors are pretty consistent where I'm shooting, these numbers are going to be consistent, and I can actually write them down. I can take a notebook, and I can write down that 200 yards equals two minutes up for my scope. Then next time I'm engaging that target, I can just pull out my book and I can look and see what that distance is. Well, if you look up here closer, even earlier than 100 yards, the bullet is still rising when it comes to 100, which means I would have to change my elevation closer too. Well, we're hunting prairie dogs and something small, we need to be very precise with that shot even up close. So let's take 25 yards for example. At 25 yards, I know my rifle shoots about one inch low. So what do we do to fix that? Well, go back to how many minutes, how many inches a minute of angle is at that distance. Well, it's one inch at 100, which tells me it would be half an inch at 50, so a quarter of inch at 25, all right? 
So one minute of angle equals one quarter of an inch. How many of those chunks fit into that one inch? Four of them. So I need to come up four minutes of angle. Maybe not what you expected, but if you come up four, zero, up two, up five, up eight, and up 12, you're gonna be able to hit these distances consistently when you go back and forth to the range. Now, we can use minutes of angle just to zero our rifle as well. I like to zero my rifle to 100 yards, but you can zero it at any range you want because now you know what minutes of angle are. So if I wanna hit right here at a 100 yard target, but when I shoot my group to zero, I end up hitting the group down here. And that group ends up being four inches low and three inches too far to the right. Well, at 100 yards, what do we do? This one's easy. We come up four minutes and we come to the left three minutes. But how do we do that on your scope? Well, here's the disclaimer. Depending on the quality of your scope, the adjustments may or may not be precise. High-end scopes are gonna be almost dead on. Where some of the lower quality scopes, you may not adjust one minute on the scope and actually get one minute down range. That's just the nature of the accuracy of the scope and the, how the adjustments work inside. That's gonna be up to you to figure out how it works. However, many over-the-counter scopes that you're gonna buy for your hunting rifle really commonly come in one click per quarter minute of angle. Well, you can tell that by either looking at the manual or by taking the scope cap off and looking at the turret. And you might see something like one click equals one quarter inch at 100 yards. Well, since you understand minutes of angle now, you know that a quarter inch at 100 yards is one quarter minute. Now here's where it seems like it might get confusing, but just take it one step at a time and it's gonna work. Think in minutes of angle. I told you that at 200 yards, I need to come up two minutes in order to hit where I wanna hit. Well. Here's where we're gonna aim at 200 yards. Here's where I'm hitting four inches low because that's my two minutes I need to come up. Well, let's say my scope like yours adjusts in one click per quarter minute. How many clicks do I need to come up to adjust for this? Always start and figure out the minutes first. I even suggest you write it down when you're at the range. Well, the answer is I need to come up two minutes of angle. Write that down. And if my scope adjusts in one click per quarter minute, that means four clicks are needed for one minute. That's not one minute at a certain distance, that's one minute at any distance. Remember, minutes of angle are independent of distance. We figure out how much it is later. I just know I need to come up two minutes. I can forget all the rest of that. Do not get confused with the distance. That's what you need to do to your scope. So to come up the two minutes, I need four clicks, per minute, so that means a total of eight clicks up. If your scope adjusts properly, you come up those eight clicks, you'll impact where you want. Remember, separate the steps out. Figure out the minutes first. Think about how many in inches one minute equals at that distance. Figure out the adjustment you need to make. If you need to, write it down and then forget everything else, then look at your scope and figure out how many clicks it is. I tell you this because even though most of your scopes may be four clicks per minute, you might have a scope like mine, which is actually one click per minute. Or one I have on another rifle, which is actually a half a click per minute. So don't think in clicks, think in minutes, and you can use the clicks to figure that out. Now, what if you say you only have a 100 yard range where you're at, and you wanna be able to shoot out further? Well, you can reference tables and data books to see what your bullet should perform at a certain distance. But remember, it's should perform. Every gun, every scope, every bullet's gonna shoot and adjust differently. There's gonna be no substitute for figuring it out for yourself. But for example, if I only had a 100 yard range and I just showed somebody how to mount their scope on their rifle so my zero's off, and I wanna reconfirm, but I wanna see what it's gonna be at the 200, let's go ahead and fake it a little bit and see what we can do. If we're shooting back at 100 yards, because that's as far as my range goes out to, but I want my hunting rifle to be zeroed at 200, and it's my 308. I know that I need to shoot two minutes high to hit where I want at 200 yards. Well, just like I said earlier, minutes of angle are independent of distance. Two minutes on my scope is two minutes on my scope. It doesn't matter where the bullet's going, the scope is still adjusted before I shoot anyway. So at 100 yards, I can shoot until I hit two inches high, 
because we know that's two minutes. I then know my scope is adjusted two minutes of angle up, which means I'll hit dead on at 200, I'll hit a couple inches high at 100, and a little high or low depending on in between, but that's a good distance because in my hunting range, being within a couple inches either way is gonna be a nice band to be in. Whatever you do, take your time to shoot good groups. Write this down, use multiple targets, and bring a measuring tape to the range so you can see how this works out for you. I think you'll be impressed about how much more you can actually do with your scope now and how much more you can make the system work for you. If you don't have a place to shoot, feel free to check out our website, wheretoshoot.org. And remember, firearm safety depends on you.